Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Poland Daily History. Today we are at the city of Lublin, one of the largest and most historical cities of eastern Poland. We will be speaking to Mr. Huber Manchik, Chief Heritage Protection Officer, about some of the most beautiful buildings of Lublin and the history behind them. Sir, in your line of work, I would assume that you would be familiarized with a lot of the historical monuments and buildings here in Lublin. I was wondering uh, if you were to tell me what are the more interesting monuments and buildings, what would you name? Certainly, one of the most interesting and valuable monuments of Lublin is the Dominican Monastery Complex. The Dominican Church is the oldest surviving church in Lublin. It dates back to the 13th century. Before Dominicans appeared here, there was a church of the Holy Cross. It's one of the oldest sacred monuments, not only in Lublin, but also in the entire Lubelskie region. The church was rebuilt many times. The oldest parts of the existing church reaches the end of the 13th century. The church was expanded in the 14th century thanks to the Casimir Fair, the Great Foundation, and then rebuilt after the fire at the end of the 17th century. At the beginning of the 17th century, the church existed in its present form. A very important fact is that the whole monastery complex is located on the south side of the church. The Dominican church is located in the old town of Lublin, one of the oldest parts settled by people. It was attached to the city walls. A particularly interesting aspect to the church is the fact that it combines all architectural styles found in Lublin. The oldest Gothic fragments of medieval architecture were unveiled during last year's conservation works conducted inside of the church. We can see the remains of the sharp Gothic arches, the church's sacristy, and also a very interesting rainbow mural on the wall, and a painting located at the entrance to the presbytery showing a fragment of Annunciation discovered last year, and very beautiful paintings from the end of the 16th century. The church itself in its present form is a building well preserved. First of all, the church has features of architecture from the beginning of the 17th century. Back then, a large group of architects created a specific style in Lublin. It was inspired by the Italians because they were coming from Italy. It was called Lublin's Renaissance. The Dominican church is one of the most interesting examples of the sacred architecture of Lublin and the Lubelski region of the first half of the 17th century. It is a large, three-nave church with a long presbytery, characteristic for the architecture of the monastery. Interestingly, it's surrounded by 11 chapels, including the Filet Chapel, the Tenczynsty Chapel and the Our Lady of Paris Chapel. The last one comes from the early 18th century. An interesting fact, the Tenczynsty Chapel was built for the purpose of keeping the Holy Cross relic. It is a large-scale building on an oval ellipse plan that closes the presbytery of the church. Today it functions as a monastery choir. We can see excellent Stucco work from Italian artist Giovanni Battista Falconi, who worked in Poland in the mid-17th century, as well as an excellent painting, The Last Judgment, painted also in the mid-17th century by Muszyński, a painter living in the Lubelski region. The building itself was one of the largest Dominican monasteries in Poland. The 17th century was the golden age of this monastery. There was a university, although not referred to in that way at the time. It was a school for Dominicans. More than 100 monks attended, that's why the monastery is so big. The monastery is associated with the tradition of the Union of Lublin, which is particularly important to us this year, because we celebrate in Lublin and throughout Poland the 450th anniversary of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. In 1569, here in Lublin, Polish Sejm and Lithuanian Sejm with their king, Sigismund II Augustus, jointly concluded union that later became the basis for the functioning of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The same on which the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was signed was held in Lublin in 1569. In accordance with tradition, a holy mass to thank God for the union was held in the Dominican monastery. The same was held at the royal castle, which was the residence of the king, while the thanksgiving mass was celebrated in the Dominican monastery. That's why the Dominican monastery is associated with the tradition of the Union of Lublin. Today, it is one of the three monuments in Lublin to be awarded with the European Heritage Label Award by the European Commission. 
So these three objects, the Dominican Monastery, the Monument to the Union of Lublin and the Chapel of the Holy Trinity, which is the only part of the castle from the 16th century, so the time of the signing the Polish-Lithuanian Union that survived. The monastery was closed in the 19th century and Dominicans living there were transferred to other monasteries. The Dominicans returned to the church during the interwar period, and recently this church is also a Dominican monastery, so not only a place of worship, not only a very important place from a religious point of view, but also a very important cultural center in the town of Lublin. Dominicans try to conduct a cultural and social activity here in many ways. This is a very important place, not only in the old town, but for the whole of Lublin. The church and the monastery have been renovated over the last few years. The entire monastery complex still needs further conservation work, but the most important renovation has been conducted already, thanks to the funding from the Ministry, the European Union and the city of Lublin. The town of Lublin itself supported the renovation, that's why it's been renovated to a significant extent. Lublin has for centuries been a home to not only the Dominican order, but a number of other Catholic religious orders. Starting from the 13th century, religious life flourished in the city, with the Dominicans competing with the Benedictines for the souls of the inhabitants. After the Battle of Grunwald in 1410, the Bridgetines also settled in the city. Next up, we will ask Mr. Monsik about the impact the religious order had on Lublin's development. So we do know that the Dominican monastery is enormous, but I was also wondering if there are any other brethren and other branches, and how do they interact with the Dominicans, and when do they when do they come here, and how do they function? W historii bardzo różnie to bywało. Lublin był bardzo dużym ośrodkiem życia klasztornego, życia monastycznego. Lublin used to be a very large center of monastic life, especially in the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries. The oldest monastery that appeared in Lublin were the Benedictines, who were taking care of the chapel of the Holy Trinity in the Middle Ages in Lublin. The Dominicans appeared in Lublin in the second half of the 13th century. We sometimes joke with the Dominicans that we have two oldest institutions that have been functioning since the end of the 13th century. One is the Dominicans and the other is the Lublin City Council. The first local government of Lublin was established in 1317. The Dominicans haven't been functioning longer than that, but they had a little break, because they were shut down by the Russians for some time. However, the city council has been functioning continuously. But of course, in various circumstances, other monasteries came to Lublin in the 15th century. The first female monastery that appeared here were the Brigitines, brought here by Władysław II Jagiełło after the victory in 1410 near Grunwald. The Brigitines church has been preserved and it functions as a normal church nowadays. After the dissolution of monasteries under the Russian partition, the Brigitines never returned to Lublin. This church, funded by Jagiełło, is the oldest monument of the Battle of Grunwald. On the battlefield in 1410, Jagiełło vowed to establish the monastery of St. Bridget, who had visions and predictions predicted Jagiełło's victory over the Knights of the Cross. The monastery was to be built in the fields of Grunwald, but eventually it was established in Lublin in 1412. Other monasteries located in Lublin in the 16th, 17th and 18th century are the Bernardines, Conventual Franciscans, Capuchins Carmelites, Barefoot Carmelites and many others. Almost 20 monasteries were established in Lublin. Most of them are preserved to this day, but unfortunately the vast majority of them don't function as monasteries, because after the January uprising the Russian authorities shut them all down. Lublin was then under the Russian power. Some monks returned here after regaining independence, for example Capuchins who function today in our own church at the Lithuanian Square located in the Old Town. New orders appeared in some churches, such as the Silesians who appeared in the Franciscan Church in the Kalinowszczyzna, a district of Lublin. And some of the churches perform a non-sacred function, for example a cultural center is located now in the former monastery of the Order of the Visitation of Holy Mary. Of course there are also new orders in Lublin, which had their own monasteries elsewhere and not necessarily located in historic buildings. But one thing should be noted, this large number of monastery buildings and monastery churches of the 16th 17th and 18th century is a characteristic feature of the town of Lublin. Jest pewną cechą charakterystyczną dla Lublina. The city of Lublin is not just one of the oldest cities of all of Poland, but also one of the best preserved. Thanks to the meticulous work of historians and the heritage protection officers, future generations will get the opportunity to witness centuries of history firsthand. That's it for today. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee. I'll see you next time on Poland Daily History.